Are you smart enough to pass the three question IQ test? So in this video, we are gonna look at the three question IQ test. It was developed in 2005 by a Princeton psychologist. During testing, they found only 17% of test takers got all three questions correct. When you see the questions, you may be a little bit surprised, uh, but perhaps hold off judgment until you've answered them and checked that you got them correct. So this test was very recently mentioned in the Tim Ferriss podcast. Luis Van Aan, who was the Duolingo founder, mentioned it as a way of, when he is recruiting, being able to very quickly just get a very basic gauge of someone's mental acuity. So let's jump in and see these questions. So here they are. You can see there's just the three of them. Each is a mathematical question of sorts. They may seem very familiar to you, you may have come across them either in school or university or possibly in recruitment. I've certainly seen them as part of some recruitment quizzes. So you might like to pause the video for a second, write down an answer to each of these, and then we'll run through the answers and we will see whether you got them correct or not. Okay, so hopefully you have written down some questions. Question one, the ball and the bat cost $1.10 together. Bat cost $1 more than the ball. What commonly happens here is people will go $1.10, they will subtract a dollar, they will come out with the incorrect answer of 10 cents. The answer is in fact 5 cents. And so if we just, with a bit of quick mental arithmetic, Five cents for the ball and a dollar five for the bat gives us the dollar ten total. So really important that we keep in mind what numbers are given to us. Sometimes you might get different variations of this question, so really important that you read carefully. Uh, the other thing that people sometimes will do incorrectly is they will give the price of the wrong item. So in this case it was asking for the ball, which is the cheaper of the two items. Okay, moving on to question two. If it takes five machines five minutes to make five widgets, how long will it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? And the answer here is five minutes. So the common thing that people will do wrong is they'll see five, 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 and they'll go, oh, well, it must be 100, 100, 100. Uh, but each machine, if we think about how long it takes one machine to make one widget, uh, and this is assuming that there's no kind of weird interactions or things. So the simplest possible case. So one machine can make one widget in five minutes. So if we had five of them, each of them take five minutes, but the five machines produce the five. So if we have a hundred machines and we are trying to make a hundred widgets, well, we know that that is still five minutes per machine. And we have one machine for each of the required widgets. Variations of this question might have different numbers or different ratios of machines to widgets, so we may need to scale up or down accordingly. Uh, but what we don't want to do is just go, well, 555, five, five, 100, 100, 100, uh, which is the common mistake a lot of people make. Okay, our last question. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days to cover the whole lake, how long would it take to cover half of the lake? So with this one, not quite sure why people get this one wrong. Um, I think they come up with the correct answer and then they think, well, that can't be right because intuitively it doesn't make sense to them because uh, they're not really thinking about proportions and ratios correctly. So the answer is 47 days. So it's doubling each time. And so if it took 48 days to cover all of it, then yesterday, half of it was covered, and when the half is doubled, that gives us the whole lake. So therefore, it took those first 47 days to build up to half of the lake being covered. So that is our three-question IQ test, really quick, and hopefully you got all of those correct. If not, hopefully you learned something, and this may serve you well, where at some point in the future, you're in a job interview, maybe it's a Duolingo, and they... Uh, decide that they want to do a quick check of your mental quickness. Uh, I have actually in a management consulting role in the interview got asked some similar questions, maybe slightly more obscure ones, uh, verbally in interview. Uh, and so it was a case of also being able to kind of think on your feet. 
So hopefully this was helpful. Please hit like and subscribe for more content.